Welcome back to the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This is Gritty, Episode 4, The Price Was Right. From the billowing tin towers to the shining streets of Showtown and the tall buildings of Coins Hollow, all the way past the docks into the muddy bogs, crooks and criminals fill the streets waiting for a chance to get a leg up on one another. In a city where coin is common denominator, and crime is endemic among all walks of walks of life. Knott's Haven can be your salvation or your demise. The only question you have to ask yourself is, are you gritty? So last ep, guys, you had just shot up a storage house that was a still, brutally murdered four to five other gangsters from the Low Tide Gang, and narrowly got away from the coppers coming in to bust everybody. As you can see from your dark windows, uh, as the police show up, we will, we will continue. I can't remember how much downtime you guys had or what you exactly did, but a week goes by after that main, after that main score that you guys did, which was quite successful. You guys now have use of an extra piece of turf which grants you small bonuses. I'll get to it right here. Um, I'm gonna say, since there's not an actual thing for a skill here, I'm just gonna make it so you guys have operational liquor for your tavern. You have a constant supply of liquor for your tavern now. So that's one more thing. It's still in shambles. Uh, you got that piece of glass put in, but it still needs some work. However, <clears throat> from there, you guys find yourselves in the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name. Who's the speak? The speak, that's right, that's right. You guys find yourself in the speak. Over across the way, what's the fellow's name? Your, uh, your card dealer. Nellis. Nellis, bingo, you got it. Nellis, where I have it written down here. Excellent. Nellis is over there uh, dealing some early morning cards to uh, some fellows who came in and been there most of the night. Where would you find yourselves? Uh, Cleo, <laughs> I imagine you're coming back from your uh, week off from gallivanting around town. I'm healing up that shoulder shot. And uh, de stress. Oh, that's right, you did a lot of healing last time. Uh, you know, well, yeah, I have three ticks on a healing clock. That's right. Because I got shot and bit by a dog, apparently, remember? That's right. And uh, I think we, I decided over between games that the dog bite is just flavor for the, mo for the most okay. part. And I remember saying something about how harm was going to work, and it was really cool that it was going to work out, but it's been too long, and I completely forget what I said. I'd have to go back in the messages and check it. However... <clears throat> We'll do it. It's probably not going to be a big issue for ending this uh, campaign, anyhow. So you guys are in the red. You guys are in the speak. I imagine. Uh, haven't been too long. What's your name again? Avery. Avery. Yes, I just read it on your sheet too. Avery, I imagine you're behind the bar, cleaning a, a mug. Are your your shirt rolled up to your elbow? Suspenders, was it? Yeah, suspenders. There we go. Get the whole look up there and get up. Perfect. And, uh, Cleo, you come in? Yeah, I'd probably be sitting at the bar. I'm going to drink, chat with Avery. You guys can hear in the background the cards flipping. Flip, 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 the background. And the washer's baby. Sorry, that should be the last one. <laughs> <Yeah. thing. laughs> That's all right. Ambient noise. So the last episode of OCB we recorded, there was so much chewing and burping, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. Ambient noise in our things. Even me listening to other podcasts, there's dogs and cats and children and things. And these are very expensive podcasts that still have dogs and cats and children going off in the background. So we're okay. <laughs> we're okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So I was basically getting, uh, I was getting, I was reducing stress from that one, uh, from everything that happened last session. That's right. And I think I took like two, an extra week or something like that on top. I believe so. He has spent a coin for an extra, an extra uh, uh, downtime. Yep. Yep. Okay. 
have that. So yeah, Avery would definitely be behind the bar. He'd be uh, cleaning out some mugs, making sure that uh, everything's uh, as cleanly as it could be in the 20s, I suppose. Or <laughs> centric 20s era, etc. And he would... Smoking a cigarette inside, as that was the fancy at the time. Oh, it's the only place to smoke a cigarette, right? Exactly. And he'd look around, just hearing the cards flip. He'd look to Cleo, and he'd just say, "It's been a bit long. I don't know. What are we, what are we supposed to do now? We uh, it's been about two weeks or something like that." I tell we killed all those people then we you got interrogated last time so that was fun yeah <laughs> you played that really well <laughs> yeah i don't even remember honestly it's been so long i know we just can sit around here doing nothing and i'm getting bored so why don't we go find some fun as you say fun the door opens to the bar the door opens to the speak you guys both look over, maybe, and you can see a rather slender man, not so tall, maybe just under six feet. Uh, hair, hair kind of all combed to one side, clean shaven, these bright blue eyes, real pale skin kind of walks in. And behind him, uh, another man, also in a suit, a uh, darker one, not as fine or refined as the other guy. And they kind of walk in a few, few steps and they kind of look around. And the first guy kind of looks back at the man behind him, and that man nods. So he walks a bit closer, a few steps. If you guys don't say anything, he's going to speak. So uh, Avery just pipes up. He just like uh, he's in the middle of cleaning a mug. He sees them walk in after the gentleman nods. He says, uh, "Can I help you?" Well, I don't know. I uh, I'm here to find a, a group of people, someone who can. Help me. Well, why don't you come to tell me what you're looking for precisely and we can uh, see what we can do? He comes over, he sits at the bar and uh, he says, I, uh, you might be, uh, I'm looking for people that were here before. They were, uh, he kind of looks over at Nellis and the other, the only other people in the bar. And they were a gang, uh, and well, they knew somebody that I know, and and I need to to, to find them. Okay, who did you know? He uh, looks around, back at the back at the guy behind him who hasn't sat down. He's just kind of standing behind him, and uh, the guy nods again. And he says, uh, I'm looking for, I'm looking for my wife, Daphne. Looks over to Cleo. Cleo very quickly looked at Avery at the same time. And he just, uh, looks to the man and he just, uh, says, just a sec. Would I recognize this man? Should no. I have? No, no the, I've never this, met him. This came after you. Avery looks over to Cleo and he just uh, kind of gestures for her to like take a couple steps so that he can just talk with her a little bit more separated. And you guys can also see these two men conversing as well now that you guys go off and start conversing. Yeah, I'd hop, hop off my bar stool and come around the other side. So he kind of hush hush, uh, moves about 20 feet with, uh, with, Daph with uh, Cleo and says, so he's looking for Daphne. Isn't, uh, isn't that the woman that you know, by chance? I mean, it's gotta be the same one. There can't be that many Daphne's in this city. Ooh, you'd be surprised. I suppose, but... Avery you know. knows a lot of Daphne's. <laughs> <laughs> so, wasn't she in dire straits last time we, uh, crossed paths with her? That's what I was going to ask. I can't remember. Like, we found uh, her. She was beaten. Yeah, briefly that. last time you guys found her in her office, beaten, unconscious, you guys kind of woke her back up, and uh, she basically told you guys to leave. I uh, didn't want anything more to do with you, and said she was uh, going to have to find her if she, can get her if she can get her own way home, she said. 
And then you guys left, and at that point, she seemed to be uh, there. Okay. Okay. She mentioned she had a husband or anything like that? Well, I mean, I figured she had moved on since the last time her and I, you know. But uh, we hadn't we hadn't talked much recently, other than a little bit of business here and there. And you, and you don't recall if she had uh, mentioned having a husband by chance? Cause... Can we recant that? I think I knew that she had a husband. Well, she told I think you it for was sure. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, gosh, I'm sorry for the editing you're gonna have to do in this <laughs> one. Did she tell you his name by chance? His name is George. Yeah, she told you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, her husband's name is George, but I don't know what he looks like or anything like that. He holds up a finger. Oi, what's your name? <laughs> uh, George. Cleo looks back at Avery. Let's go. <laughs> and as you guys uh, kind of also hear them talking uh, across the way, you can hear one particular thing. The man behind uh, George says, that's her. Kind of eyes looking at you, Cleo. She just thinks dead eyes right back at him. Avery puts his elbows on the countertop and puts one arm, one hand over his fist and just uh, kind of leans in. He says, and, uh, what exactly are you looking for? What do you need? Oh, she's missing. She's missing. She didn't come home. It's been a week. It's been almost two weeks now. She didn't come home? She didn't come home. I've been to the police. I've even looked at some nefarious people and asked them for information. They don't know. They can't find her. Nobody knows. Who or are they? Or they're not telling me. So how did you know to come to us? Well, Daphne, before Daphne and I got together, I knew she was into other things. But in order for both of us to progress in this society and in the... In in the various, uh, various halls of law, well, you need to keep up, uh, keep up appearances. So I was single, she was single, we both wanted to get ahead in where we were, and we both found ourselves in kind of a, a rest point. So we decided to, to marry. Now, it wasn't not a marriage of love, mind you, it was a marriage of opportunity, a marriage of progression. Now that it happened, we both gained much in the society. We have uh, risen quite high in, in the ranks of our fellow peers. But now she's missing it. Yes, because how dare a woman be single and, you know. It's it's about appearances. I cannot have my wife. I, I need to find her. I, uh... So no, you're worried more about your appearance than her well-being. Well, do you know if, if she had any specific place she would have gone? She said she left that life behind. I, I don't know much of it. Uh, she could be anywhere. I don't tend to ask her. Didn't tend to ask her too many questions about her history. It uh, caused her to be distant. But the thing here says that you guys know her. It says that. You know her. I did once. So it is you. Depends what you mean. So you're Cleo? Is that your name? It is. You can see almost a little bit of redness go in his cheeks and, and then dissipate. <clears throat> and then you, uh... Yeah. Well, we'll certainly help you find your wife who would want your appearances to slip. I'll, I'll be more than pleased to pay you a, a hefty sum for, for finding her. Uh, don't know what else to say. Directions. Do you happen to have any inkling of an idea where she might have gone? I mean, the only relatives that she has is uh, her mother up north, but if she went up there, then she went up there, that's that's fine, I guess, but she didn't leave word. I seen her that one morning, she went to work, and she didn't come home. 
What day was that? He uh, confirms that it was the same day that you guys seen her. I call it a Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, October the 3rd. Right. We also seen her that Tuesday. And then you can see him kind of, kind of perk up. Well, what, what happened? Was there something wrong? Like, why, you, why were you... You could say that. He almost asks a question, but then he stops asking. Nothing of that nature. It was business. Uh, business that went poorly. But she was alive when last I left her. A bit worse for wear, but still well, alive. Well, worse for wear? What do you mean, worse for wear? She had been attacked. Um, her office had also been vandalized. You can see his face kind of go pale, more pale than it was, and he kind of looks back at the man behind him, the Fink, as you guys have uh, been informed. And uh, they kind of nod to each other, and the Fink walks out. Who's your muscle? I'm a simple lawyer. I don't have any muscle. He's, uh, he's just, he's an underling of mine, but he knows a little more of the streets than I do. See, well, we can't go running around with our heads cut off like chicken. We need information if we're going to help to find your wife. And quite frankly, we don't have Jack at all. We know she left. We know she told us to leave when we tried to help her, given the state of things. And uh, we have no direction on where to go at all. Well, that's not completely true. We um, used to have a hideout back in the day, but I can't imagine she would have gone there. And we could always check. It's not, it's a, worth a shot, but it's been a couple weeks. I mean, surely if she was dead, a body would have turned up, no? I don't speak of such things. I'm just trying to <clears throat> calm the nerves, believe it or not. Call it realism. Call it realism more than anything else. She's been gone for that long. She's either scared at the point where she's hiding or she's been dead. His eyes kind of go downcast to the, uh, to the counter and he says, I don't suppose you have a drink back there? Be fancy. Anything. Understandable. He uh, grabs a unmarked bottle and pours it into a empty cup, sets it on the on the counter right in front of him, and he just uh, l watches it, watches him as he uh, picks up the drink. He does. He picks it up. He takes a drink and says. It's a different brew. Puts it back down. The door opens up again. It's the Fink, and he uh, walks up to George, and he says, uh, "The car's ready." In a bit of a, a whiny, high-pitched voice. The car's ready. <laughs> That's just what I imagine. <laughs> and he says, uh, <clears throat> he gives you his address where you can find him, and he says, "If you find, if you find her anything." Any information that's uh, worth telling me, please, uh, please call me. You aren't coming with us. I can't be seen. I can't be seen here. I can only be here a certain amount of time. You mean and as the likes of us? And he looks back at the fake and the fake nods to him and he kind of points to the door. And he says, you can call me here. He slips you a, a card and he kind of walks in and says, thank you for whatever you can do. You gonna pay for your drink? He pays for the drink after, <laughs> after, you, after you remind him, yes. <laughs> he reaches in his, uh, his billfold, and you guys can see when he pulls it out, he's a very rich man. He's got a golden uh, billfold on it, and he just kind of flips out a couple, way more than one drink is cost, and he puts it on the table, and he, and he walks it, puts it on the counter, and he walks out. He takes the money and puts it somewhere safe. Cleo grabs one of the bills. <laughs> Stuffs at the top of her bus <laughs> You notice he didn't finish all the drink either. And he just took a sip. Cleo finishes that. <laughs> it's sanitized. She's yeah. a little distraught now. Now that her ex lover is missing. <clears throat> Avery does come back to see if 
Cleo finishing that drink after putting the rest of the money where it uh, can be safely kept. And he says, uh, so she had a hideout. I hope it's okay I threw that in. Of course, this is over here role play, absolutely. There it's happens been a to be a hideout, so. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I don't know where it is, but we it's have one. It's, it's, in show, it's in Showtown, actually. Yeah. Where would that have been? Up in Showtown, we had a, a little room in the back. A little oh. place. But, uh, probably. Avery, though, you would know now that it's owned by Price. That so happened to be owned by Price. And if she went there, I'm pretty sure that she's more than likely in bed with them or not by choice. Maybe there. She went there, or maybe she went up to her mother. We, we can. Uh, he just looks at his hands that are kind of still messed up a little bit. Oh, yeah. kind of crooked. And he says. If that place is owned by Price, I don't, I don't know how I feel about going there. Not with a, a Tommy gun. <laughs> you wouldn't make me go alone, would you? No. Then I'll change my shoes. She turns her heel and heads upstairs. All right. As uh, you come back down the stairs, you guys are kind of getting ready to leave. And uh, now this is still dealing cards. There's only one guy there now. He's just stealing cards, just him and him and the one guy. And the door, and the front door to the to the speak opens up, kind of bangs open. And you can see there's this large man walking in backwards. You're not sure who it is at first, but as soon as he turns red, you can see the apron stained in red. And on it, he has pieces of bread and sausage and meats and cheeses all, all out. No chicken, though. No chicken on there. He turns around, you guys can see Vlad. He walks up and he says, where have you been? It's been a week. I haven't seen you. Are we supposed to see you? No, I'm just across the street. Oh, I'm doing the wrong accent, aren't I? No, he was Russian. No, yeah, he was Russian, okay. German, or something. Something like that. Yeah. I've watched from across the street. You're on vacation or something? Oh well, if you paid any mind, I'm sure you can understand why. We're actually about to go tend to some business now. Oh, it's lunchtime now. Here. He drops this big tray on the, on, the, on there and there seems to be all uh, this food and then a newspaper rolled up on the right hand side. Avery takes a uh, piece of sausage and takes the newspaper and takes a look at it as he eats. Front page. You see female body found in the streets of Showtown. Does it have a depiction? It does. It's the the. Hold on a second. They have a name. Daphne. Nope. No. 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 The people. The shutters. Um, you can see uh, there's this black and white picture. The shutters must have got to the body before the police did, and were able to take a picture because it's, you know, the the police usually keep. Uh, keep everything tied down for information and stuff like that, but uh, there is a picture in the newspaper, and uh, there is a resemblance to Daphne. If you can think about it, it's like very, is the word macabre? Yeah. Like a dead body, a picture of a dead body, you know, just recently dead kind of thing, like very recently. I haven't seen this yet, so... I'm looking for chicken. Yeah, that's right, you're on the, this side of the bar. That's right, yeah. Avery <laughs> that's right. kind of just picks up a piece of cheese. He slows his chewing for a bit and he just kind of stares at the uh, page and he just kind of furrows his brow and he's staring at the page for longer than one would intend at that one spot where the picture is. And you can see that it goes on for a few seconds and he just uh, looks over to Cleo eventually and. Uh, swallows the bite of food in his mouth and he just says, I don't think we're gonna need to go looking for Daphne. He turns he lowers the, the cheese from her mouth. Turns the paper around and just gestures with the sausage bit he has in his hand to the picture. Cleo drops her cheese and just snatches the paper from him to examine it. Sits down slowly in a chair. It's 
Could be anyone in this photo. You're in denial. It's her. Well, there's only one way to be sure. The uh, article reads that she was found with uh, a suitcase with clothing in it. She seemed to be on her way to the bus station, on her way out of town. That makes no sense. Where would she have been going? Well, uh, her, her husband did say she had a mother up north. Perhaps she was heading there. Perhaps. I suppose we could get in touch with her mother and see if perhaps she had called or written. That would be the safest option instead of going headlong into Price. They wouldn't have telephones. Yeah, they did actually they do. do. They have the old old fashioned ones where you the rotary. You gotta it. pick up the thing and dial the operator and tell the operator what you want, tell the operator the number. That's that's the number. Gotcha. Alright. So Alright, so they would have telephones. It says uh Well we could try giving her a call. We have to get the number from George. Well, we know where he lives. We do. You'd be surprised to see us so soon. Yeah, he said, he said, call him. Oh, he said, call him. Yep. Oh, look at that. He also gave us a number there, too. I guess I wasn't paying too much mind. Uh, yep. We can go try to give him. Do we have a telephone in the speak? That's the well, main. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, is it like one of those things you have party it, lines? It's, it's all dusty. You haven't picked it up since you guys kind of moved in, but yeah, you do. All right, so Avery kind of meanders over to the uh, telephone, and he starts. He takes a uh, he takes it off, and he just starts to dial the op the operator. He waits. There's a there's a ticking and and a click, and a voice came comes on the uh, the phone and says, "Hello, how can I direct your call?" Oi, I need uh, to direct it to this number here, and he starts slowly reading off the number on the paper, or on the card. Very well, please wait. Clicks again. The other click, and then there's a uh, ringing, and it rings. Would he even be home yet? And it rings. And it rings. <laughs> and it rings. Cleo, Cleo cracks up. Avery, he just left. He's probably not home. Probably run down the road and find him. Oh, he's in a car. Wow. You have long legs. <laughs> she turns away and goes back to her cheese. She's in complete denial. She doesn't think it's that great at all. So Avery just kind of sheepishly puts, hangs up the receiver and uh, looks over to Vlad. And he says, uh, well, thank you for the paper. It's definitely uh, gave us a good lot of information there. Uh, pretty certain that we uh, knew this person. You are pretty certain. George, uh, sorry, not George. Right. Sergey makes his way up and does also look at the page, and he's pretty sure. He's got a military eye for detail, and he's pretty sure that it's her. Why do you always kill my lovers? <laughs> We have, I, I didn't intend to, but we have to, we're speeding up to the end of the campaign. <laughs> it wasn't my intention to kill, to knock her off, but this or is the perfect way to jump in. Or get like, it's just no, there's no winning for <laughs> This is not saving. No good ever comes out of this place. <clears throat> so, Avery just kind of nods and continues eating the food that was brought over there. He doesn't eat too much, but he kind of, uh... You know, pours uh, Sergei a drink if he wants. He will. Sergei is drunk. <laughs> He'll take it now that you can. He can find uh, all of his vice right here in the same bar. He's pretty good. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, eventually, Nellis will come over and take up the paper, and uh, and he says, "Why well, don't you go uh, talk to the shutters? Perhaps they know something. I know they have deals with some of the." The other gangs around here, when they uh, do something gruesome like this, you take the picture, they make some coin, they get some good advertising in the in the paper. 
Why don't we uh, sneak into the medical examiner's office? I can call one time. That morgue? Morgue. That's a good idea. I didn't think about that avenue. That's perfect. See, I'm sneaking into the morgue to make sure that they might have cremated it by now. Two weeks. It's been about a week and a half. They don't cremate in the 20s, I don't think. Would they? I think burial is still pretty popular. I would say that she's a Jane Doe right now. They're probably keeping her yeah. for until they can't keep her anymore. And then they, you get a pine box in the church cemetery. It's because she, you know, she definitely looked and appeared as high class. You know, they mm -hmm. they know the difference when a dead body rolls in there. That's not high class, and the, the difference. Well, we could uh, we could try. I don't know exactly how we can get in, but. You can figure something out. Let's see. Uh, again, I think I think uh, I think you're just in denial over this because it, it's nearly picture perfect. We can talk well, to the shutters. I mean, we want to make certain before you're running around after some paloozy down the street. Of course. So Avery looks over to Nellis, and he just says, "Hey, Nellis." We might be going out here soon if you could hold down the fort. I got the fort for you. No, I said he just, uh, he, uh, Avery just kind of starts to think about what, what to do. So, if we're going to the morgue, he says, uh, so if we're going to the morgue, we're going to need some sort of excuse to get in there. And see the body could possibly start a fire evacuate the building and risk burning the body why don't we just tell them we think she's our family no. walk right through the door where they'd identify her yeah that could work sure by the way so you guys head to the morgue yeah all right so you guys to the morgue. head to uh not, not save any more than more. And you guys walk in. There's a, a desk. It's, uh, you know, 10 by 10 white corridors that lead to a desk and they go left and to the right. And each door there. And then there's two double doors to your left and to your right. And there's a, a person standing behind the desk. I got this. <clears throat> you can see that their uh, head is down in the books. They seem to be writing something. There's a bell. I go up and ding the bell, even though they're right there. Yep. <laughs> bell, bell dings, they kind of uh, finish writing out what they're doing before they look up. And then they look up and uh, there's a man, tan skin, short hair, says, uh, eh, how can I help you? Oh, well, hi there. This is my husband, Fred. My name is Thelma. And oh, nice and to meet you, Velma. Thank you. Hi. Um, we saw that terrible photo in the paper, and I'm really worried it might be my cousin Kate. So we just thought maybe we could make sure. I think we make something like that happen. Yeah, uh, just puts up this uh, clipboard. Just jot your names down right there. And... Of course. So he writes down Velma and Fred. Okay. And he, uh, he goes and opens the door. He hollers out to somebody. Uh, one of somebody in livery comes over and meets with you guys, and he says, take them to the morgue, they might uh, be relatives of that John Doe, or that Jane Doe, rather. And you guys are getting uh, escorted down and down. You go down two floors into where the morgue is, and uh, they bring you in. The one of the person in livery stops at the door and opens it, and you guys can see in there there's uh, another doctor, the uh, I'm s Mortician. Thank you. You can only assume the mortician. And there, they've got their uh, back turned, their poised over body that has the uh, the Y incision, the whole rib cage is all opened up. He doesn't turn around. He seems to be busy in his work, so to speak. Yeah, he. It's kind of difficult to interrupt him, something like that, because it's an autopsy. So <laughs> he, uh, Avery, kind of looks a little bit sheepish, maybe a little bit squeamish around the dead. He, uh, and there's a lot of dead. He's in the domain. A fortune roll. <laughs> there's quite a few dead. 
Goodness. Four or five bodies on uh, on slabs, all covered up with these sheets. You can see stains of red and whatnot in them, and some of them. The smell in here isn't that great either. A fly buzzes by your face. Oof. Just think that'll be us one day. <sighs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> so, Avery kind of uh, pipes up and he says, uh, Hello. Excuse me. Hey, how can I help you? Nice. Shudders slightly. Nice. Uh, there was a Jane Doe who came in here um, about two weeks ago and submitted the papers. Me and uh, Velma here. We want to make sure it's not one of our extended family. You can see him uh, nod. He didn't look at you when he spoke to you. He was just staying with the body, but he kind of nods and you can hear a clink, clink as he puts down two objects and you can hear the the sound of rubber gloves kind of slink off the hands as he kind of just throws them on top of the body. And he turns around. It's this tall man, like six and a half feet tall, uh, kind of lanky. Um, one of his eyes is missing. His beard is patchy. Someone you would expect to see in a morgue dealing with dead bodies in this type of uh, type of city. But he looks at you for a moment, nods, and he walks over to this wall that has uh, uh, these doors on it. Only you could assume that they're places where they keep bodies. And he opens this door, it kind of squeaks, and he slides out this, uh, this platform that comes out about six feet, and there's a body on it with, uh, with a sheet over it. He looks over to Cleo, and he just kind of steps aside. Cleo steps up to the body and gently pulls the sheet back. Looks like Daphne. Except... How overcome with emotion are you? She's hiding it, but inside she's freaking out pretty bad. Okay, so if you want to roll, uh... Something. Um, to hide it? To no, 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 to, yeah, to, to a, a sort of perception on the body. Uh, kind of let's do oh, study. Sorry. I'm not supposed to ask you. That's God okay. It. Um, it's okay, I need a little prompting. Let's do a, a study or Sounds survey. Sounds good. Roll, roll whatever you like. Study or survey is good. Okay. I don't remember how we roll this. Uh, what do you got? How many pips and what? one in survey. One in survey? What do you got in study? Nothing. Okay, so one in survey is one dice. The the, stu the study would be two at disadvantage. We roll so two and take the lowest. So you probably want your survey. So I just roll one. Yeah. So I roll. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. You just. She looks like she's been beaten, but she was beaten before. But this looks worse. It's the other side of her face now, and the, bru the bruising seems to be going down on her shoulder as well, where the blanket's covering up. They have tattoos in the twenties. She didn't. She's a kind of a purist until she met you. Avery takes a step closer and he'll, uh, I'm gonna roll study. Yep. So Perfect. It. Study. You tear off the sheet to study. Or at least pull it back a little bit. Oh, that's a one. Okay. Uh, he Gosh. quickly Do we have puts his hand <laughs> on your hand to pull off the sheet and he says, no, you don't want to see what's under there. What do you mean? Uh, she's been brutally beaten. Kicked. Even after her death. Why would someone do that? Uh, I've been here a long time. It seems like some sort of message to me. They found her beside uh, some casino. Uh, I can't remember the name now. They said it was uh, Price Palace or something like that. I can't remember. Oh my. Avery what? just nods and... Uh, he leaves the room. Cleo does not. Because birthmarks wouldn't... Hey. Mm, okay. Um, my, my cousin Kate, she had a little birthmark on her left knee. Right to the side. Kind of like a mole. How's your stomach? Well, it's alright. And as he waits for you to walk off a little more... Assuming that you're the one with the bad stomach in this situation, and he uh, peels back the, uh, the sheet, 
and she's been beaten. You can see that her arm's been broken. One of her knees has been broken as well, not that knee. You do see the birthmark on her knee. It is her, but she's been beaten severely. And then he says, as you can see, she's uh, been beaten by someone who knows how to beat someone. They use their bare hands. They didn't even use a weapon. Cleo's just kind of silent. Someone that knows how to do this. Perhaps uh, someone that knows how to box. Someone that's been fighting. Boxer. Her accent slips for a moment. You may not notice. You didn't. Quiet. <laughs> He's a simple man. <laughs> Cleo just gently pulls the sheet back up over him. She closes it in and shuts the door. If there's anything else I can help you with? Arrangements. Does she belong to you? Uh, yes, she's, she's my cousin Kate. Well, uh, you can uh, arrange anything you need to arrange with the, with the desk upstairs. Thank you. Are you alright over there? He just stays silent and walks out the door. I guess not. You might want to tend to your friend or he'll be in here soon enough. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you again for your help. I would say it's my pleasure, but that seems a little, um, unsavory, considering where I am. But I must get back to work. She nods and follows Avery. You guys, you guys can, you guys leave out as you, uh, look at the other body, perhaps, with the Y incision. You can see the gloves he just kind of tossed into the big wound. And on the leg of the uh, corpse that's on there, there's an apple with a bite out of it, just sitting right on the thigh. Oh no. And you guys headed, are outside of the morgue in the hallway. Okay. Avery, as they're walking up, he just looks over to Cleo and he just says, Well, I suppose uh, we should let George know. I suppose we should. It's a damn shame. The only person I can think who can do that did this to my hands. The mortician suggested perhaps a boxer. Price knew how to swing. It wasn't Price that smashed your hands, it was one of his underlings. Price is a banker. Straight up banker. Fat, luxurious. Banker. Like Boss Hog. Yes, That's exactly. In yes. that white suit. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. I don't think he'd be wearing white suits in this part of town, but <laughs> definitely high class suit. Yeah. He's got the cane that he doesn't use. Mm. You know, that kind of guy. Price's, he's got underlings. Price's underlings knew how to throw a punch. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them to have done it. And as you're thinking about that, you guys remember you had a meeting with Willard. And Willard gave you a list of names and people right here there was um he had a list of uh people he had phil the giant mccullen there was uh kenzie the crown taffeties there was paul the pitbull crenshaw And uh, those were the three people. And it's uh, in the notes that he gave you, Paul, the Pitbull Crenshaw, was a bare knuckle boxer. And still is, in fact. Cleo rubs a hand along that scar on her jaw. Just kind of shudders at the memory. It's Paul Crenshaw. He's the one who Got your jaw wired for a bit. She just closes her eyes for a moment and kind of steals herself. Yeah, you could say that. Well, we gotta find out where he is, cause I think today, I think today's the day that he dies. I agree, and I would very much like to, um, to bring him to that mortician. So I'll give you guys one, um, um, one thing about finding information, and then we're going to jump into the score. Sure. 
<clears throat> right. Um, so Willard, he was that older man. Yep. And he gave us the names, but uh, did he also give us a phone number to call to? To call Willard? To call Willard. Uh, at that point, I didn't think about telephones in the game, but yes, at this <laughs> point, he, he would have, you would have contact information to call him. So, getting back to the speak, Avery does indeed use the phone, dials the operator. Hello, how can I direct your call? <laughs> Oi, I need to call this number for Willard. He uh, starts re reading up the number for Willard. You can hear it go, long distance charges will apply. Fine. She, uh, she directs your call, and it rings, and it rings, and uh, it picks up, and uh, another female voice answers the phone and says, Hello? How can I help you? No. It's Willard there. Uh, uh, Willard, uh, may I ask who's speaking? Avery. Avery. One moment, please. You can hear some muffling mama's name. It's Avery. It's Avery. And there's some more muffling in there. Phone picks up again, picks up again. It says, ah, Avery. Paul Crenshaw. The pit bull. Have any information on him? Where he is? He could, uh, I'd imagine. I imagine he's with Price most of the time, but he's an avid uh, bare knuckle boxer. If there's any competitions going in the lower docks, you can most likely find him there. He's usually hanging around Price. He's a bare knuckle boxer, and he's usually in the lower docks. Daphne's been murdered, beaten to death. So, Who's Daphne? It's a lady that Cleo fancied and uh, gave us a lot of information. You wouldn't tell people that Cleo fancied a woman in the 20s. <laughs> Just saying. Because <laughs> now I have a brace on my head. <laughs> uh, in, in the land of Knott's Haven, the only thing that, uh, the only thing that people are against, but the only thing that counts is money. The only thing that counts is coin. Okay. He says, uh, I wouldn't want to be on uh, the bad side of Chloe. Cleo. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this game is just fine. <laughs> well, I do. Uh, we are. We are going to scope out some sort of bare knuckle boxing event, and uh, hopefully, there might be some comeuppance for what's happened. Just thought I'd let you know. Oh, keep me informed, but, you know, don't, uh, make sure no one knows that I'm helping you. Of course. So, uh, Avery would also probably want to go get some information around, like, the street to see where bare knuckle boxing events are as well. Yep. Uh, yeah, actually, I can give you that, no problem. Um, you have contacts? Mm-hmm. Mostly Nellis, Nellis and Warren. Willard. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna say that um, Vlad also is kind of your uh, contact for the group, basically. You guys really helped him out with stuff. Um, but yeah, Nellis or uh, or Vlad can, can help you. I like doing Vlad's voice if you want to go that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. let's, let's bring in So... And then I can't speak to him. <laughs> As Nellis is at a game of cards, uh, he walks across the street to the uh, butcher, butchery deli. The red bread. The red bread, yes. And uh, Ugh. <laughs> he opens the uh, shop door. Uh, Vlad behind the counter? Uh, sure, Vlad's there. You open the door and he says, Ah, Avery, welcome! Hello, Vlad. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, how are you doing there today? Now that I don't have to pay up to the Low Tide Gang anymore, I'm able to make some coin. I'm able to expand my business. Look, 
he gestures and the whole, there was a building beside him that was uh, abandoned and he's able to, he, there's a big hole in the wall now and they seem to be working on there expanding his business. Oh, excellent there, Vlad. Uh, great, I'm glad, glad that we could help you out. That's perfect. So, uh, just a request for some information if you might have some. I don't know anything for you guys. Oh, well. Bare knuckle boxing in the low docks. <laughs> I don't know, but Avery, you don't look like the one that could handle that sort of thing. It's not, not exactly what I mean. I just need to know where. I want to make a bet, a wager, just for some fun. Well, I've, I've never bet on fighting myself, but uh, I have a cousin in... Uh, in somewhere in this town. Uh, I have a cousin in West Planks, big man. He, uh, he works at the shipping yard. He used to, and he does this, kind of, does a one, two, three combination. <laughs> he, uh, he used to fight, he used to box in, in Russia. Very good, very strong. He might know. Okay, what's his, what's his name there? Godfrey. 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 Okay, Godfrey, gotcha. All right. I'll go talk to him, and I'll see if he has any information for me. Thank you, Vlad. I appreciate wait, it. Wait, wait. He gets a bag and starts putting like pepperoni and stuff, meat ends in him, and ties it up, and says, "Give this to him. Tell it from me, from me, from Vlad." Oh, of course. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. And uh, so he uh, goes and. He heads off to the West Planks, to the shipyard, to find that uh, very large man, Godfrey. Both of you are just you, Avery. He'll uh, go back and offer uh, Cleo if she wants to come along. Uh, yeah, and can we perhaps stop at George's on the way? Someone should really let him know where Daphne is. It's in two different directions. Can we pretend it's not? <laughs> you guys can spend some time and go. You guys can stop by his offices. It's still daytime, so yeah. yeah we might as well go to George's first, then, just while the, while the day's still young, so. So you guys, uh. You guys enter the area called Low Ridge. It's, uh. in the more elite part of town. It's within the den, actually. Uh, but it's further down towards the, uh. The, the, towards the coast. You guys, uh. pull up. You guys get out of your taxi. You guys are near his uh, business offices. Avery, um, Avery would have brought the newspaper. Of course, of course. Uh, Sergey has also gone with you. Okay. Yes. Was it an old newspaper that was on the tray? No, it was a today's newspaper. Is it Sergey or Vlad? Sergey, uh, George's character. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yeah. Uh, so you guys get there, and you guys can see uh, see where it is the address, and on the on the window on the door it says um, uh, right here. The name of his law firm. All right, you guys can see on the door it says uh, law firm of Gertz and Weiser. And you guys go in. There. It's very, very nice in here. Carpeted floor, there's sofas where you guys can sit on. Everything's shiny, everything's nice. There's mirrors on the wall, pictures on the wall. And you go up to the uh, to the desk at the front, and there's uh, a lady there sitting behind. And uh, she looks up and she says, Ha, ah, how can I help you? We have some news for George. Uh, of course, uh, one moment. She uh, presses the intercom. George, you have some company? And uh, she clicks it off. Oh, a moment later, the door opens up, and uh, it's the Fink you guys seen. He looks at you both, and he 
just nods and judges you both inside and opens the door for you. So, Sergey and uh, Cleo and Avery walk in, and uh, before before they walked in, he looks to Cleo and he just says, "Should I tell him? Do you want to tell him?" I think it should be me. I got her in this situation in the first place. Gotcha. So you guys walk in. The door shuts behind you, and George unexpectedly almost rushes you guys at the door, and he says, oh, Have you found her? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Have you found her? What? Where, what What? news have you? George, sit down. And he's a lawyer. He already knows what you're going to say. You can see the paleness goes in his face, and he finds the nearest chair, and he sits down. Avery just crosses his arms and just kind of looks at one spot. Takes a deep breath and just kind of hunkers his shoulders a bit. Cleo kind of goes and squats next to his chair. Puts a hand on his arm and says, Did you see the paper this morning? Uh, it's, I've been too busy to uh, to look around. Then he kind of pushes your hand off his shoulder. Avery uh, kind of meanders on beside them and just hands the rolled up newspaper to... Uh, just out so that one of them can grab it. Cleo snatches it away. She doesn't want me to see. Okay. Um, there was a body found in the street up near Price Palace, the showtown. He blinks at you. A woman was badly beaten both before and after her death. His eyes go to the floor. We went down to the morgue. False pretenses, of course. I- I'm sorry, George, but it's her. And uh, his eyes kind of just kind of gloss over for a moment. And uh, if you guys were trying to talk to him, he would be hearing nothing but kind of echoes from a hallway for a moment. And then he kind of shakes out of it. He says, Why? Why? I mean, I know she had a history, but why now? Why now? I think the wrong people found out about that history. It's price. Pieces of garbage. Price. Hey, Pedro Price. Pedro. She, she said that name before. Pedro. Fink, what did she say? And the Fink speaks up in this whiny voice and says uh, that uh, she's tried to get Pedro on many things before for certain things, but he's always found a way out of it through, uh, through nefarious means. And then George says, she must have, she must have found something out, caught something on him. Or got his attention in some way. Uh, what? You didn't have her doing anything, did you? No. We didn't. Kind of nods. Kind of nods and... He says, well... Well, do you know who did it? We have our suspicions, but... We'll take care of that, George. It's, it's the least we can do. He exhales and looks around and... Well, if... If you do do it, and you get in trouble, you have my card. Call me. And I'll do what I can to help you with the law. Thank you. But if something bad goes wrong, you don't know me. I can't have my reputation be scarred or marred by this. Will you not claim her as your wife, George? She'll always be my wife. I'll have to go down and see for myself to make it legal. What, uh... Now, you went down there. You said, under false pretenses, I'll need all the information, who you said you were, everything, when you went. Of course. Yes, talk to the Fink. Tell him I, I, I have to go. Avery uh, 
gives the think of kind of a rundown of what they went there under. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I was just a friend of hers, and that uh, she was her cousin, and uh, they wanted to confirm it was there. You can see the Fink studiously uh, writing all this information down in uh, on a piece of paper. And he doesn't doesn't talk a lot because I don't want to do Kyle's voice. Uh, but he takes all the information. And you guys can see George kind of go off towards the bookshelf. He's got this large wall bookshelf of a uh, library, almost twice as big as Daphne's was. He pulls down a book and opens the book, almost like the one you have there, and he pulls out a small bottle of whiskey and a glass, closes the book, and just kind of puts the book on an end table, and he, he goes to sit at his desk, and he pours a drink and turns the chair away from you guys. All right, Will. Now we're going, now I suppose we're going to the shipyard to find Godry. That's in West Plank, so we got to go. That's a bit of a drive. <laughs> Yeah, it does take a better part of the day to do all that traveling. It's probably near the end of the day now. Um, Probably near the end of the day by the time you guys make it down to the West Planks. But you do get down to the shipyard. You guys can see there's two or three large vessels being being repaired and or built right now. So... And there's lots of dock hands running around, carrying things, moving things. Um, no. Anyone look particularly large? I will roll a survey. Oh, that's a five. Five. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a few uh, large people, but you can definitely tell five or six that have that beefy brawniness that uh, that Vlad had explained. You know, you, you can easily pick out three or four of them, and those, uh, one or two of them definitely have Vlad's kind of, uh, visage, kind of. Takes out an extra pack of cigarettes, and, uh, he walks over to some of the dock hands, the larger ones, and he, uh, kind of opens up the little flap on the top, and he just kind of holds out the, uh, pack for them to take, uh, some smokes. He says, hey, how you doing today there, lads? Uh, break time! One of them walks over and says he seems to be, uh, seems to be the one almost in charge, sort of. And he says, break time! Go! Have a break! And he walks over to you and he, he takes a smoke and puts it in his mouth. Lights it up, he pulls a kind of, uh, lights a, lights a match, like, I don't know, off his elbow or something like that. Or something ridiculous, and lights up the smoke. <laughs> A big breath and blows it out. He has that uh, bag of uh, meat and stuff in his left hand. Okay. He says, uh, do you happen to be Godry? What chance? His uh, eyes kind of, uh, his, his brow kind of furrows for a moment. Yes, my name is Godry. How did you know my name? Uh, Vlad. Vlad, that old son of a bitch. Yeah, no, he, uh, he wanted me to give you this. He takes it and he doesn't even open. He smells the bag. Mm, Vlad, you're a god. He opens it, nods his head. What can I help you with? So, uh, Vlad uh, gave me some information that uh, you did a lot of uh, boxing back in your home country. Did a lot of boxing, yes. Right. How I manage. Different kind of boxing, I suppose. Uh, so, we just need some information on uh, where you might go to bet on said fights around here. Perhaps you might have some information like that about where one might go. I, 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 I said I don't box anymore, but I certainly gamble, and I'm going there this evening. Oh, you are. Whereabouts would that be? It's uh, in West Planks, on the docks. And he gives you a, a specific. It's warehouse number twenty six. But you you just can't show up. They will beat you to death and throw you in the in the river. Oh, okay, I see. How do, how does one manage to get in then? You either buy your way in with coin, uh, much coin, or uh, you have someone bring you. So he takes a piece of pepperoni and bites like half of it off. Mm. Vlad. Mm. 
Cleopites up. Can you take us? Possibly. Uh, what? What are you doing there? What? Uh, what do you want? Do you want to gamble? Do you want to bet on the fight? Something like that. He, uh, Avery, just kind of shrugs his shoulders and kind of just gets a little bit closer, and he, uh, he gets a little bit closer to Godrey, and he just says, "So." It's like the most slow, like, <laughs> suspenseful dice sliding. So, Vlad has been giving us some help, and uh, we are part of a uh, crew that has uh, freed up his uh, deli shop from the Low Tides. I yeah, Low Tides, they are running the show tonight. Right, so... There might be a certain someone there that uh, we want information on. Cleo cuts in because Avery can't keep his mouth shut. I think I'm gonna need a a roll for this. Be beating around the bush kind of thing. Can I roll a finesse? To... Finesse is more of a physical thing. Okay. It's, it's all uh, under resolve. Those would be. Sway. I guess. That too would sway. I'll sway him. Wait a minute, don't I have a... No, that's I can tell people are lying. Yep. Not up there. Five and five, 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 five. five, five. that's a success, absolutely. He says, Wait, well, I guess if Vlad, if uh, Vlad sent you, I could bring you, uh, but you, you must behave. Uh, if they know I bring you and you do something bad, I will no longer go back. That's what I do. I work and I gamble. I work and I gamble. I work and I gamble. Of course. So if you're doing something, I would like to know. We're just looking for information at the time. We'll see. It should be just making sure somebody's there, that's all. You have to know somebody's present, just make sure it's the same person we think it is, and then that's all we need. Then, uh, Godfrey kind of, uh, looks at the sky and he says, at, uh, about three hours, uh, about three hours from now, uh, warehouse 26, be there, I'll meet you outside, when it gets dark, you'll hear the ship's bell. Okay. Got that. Three hours. Okay. So, if you guys don't want to say anything else, you guys part ways. Uh, three hours go by, and you guys find yourself outside of Warehouse 26. And it's not a very big warehouse, maybe about uh, 30 by 40 in the long way. And you guys can see Godri walking up. He's wearing, not wearing his dock clothes anymore. He's uh, wearing still sort of work clothes, but nothing too formal, nothing too fancy. Okay. <clears throat> and Avery is going to. Just check and see if he sees any like cars or anything that kind of look kind of like high class, and also if uh, Paul Crenshaw is in one of them or coming in uh, coming out of one of them. Absolutely. That's a six. Okay. Yeah, you see, you don't see Paul. You don't see Paul Crenshaw, but you um, you recognize you recognize the cars. These cars are the, the high-end cars that the gang had before they got disbanded. These are your cars that Price took from you guys. Your vehicles, your equipment, and you can see them there. Okay, gotcha. Amongst multiple other vehicles, you, you, can, see, you can see a Roadster and uh, a Steelhead, things like that. 
very, very high-end cars that were generally used by you guys for uh, uh, moving booze quickly across lines and that sort of thing. Okay. But you definitely recognize those cars, so one could assume that Paul is there right now, inside already. Alright. So, let's see... Cars... Okay. And is there anybody else outside the warehouse? Or just... Uh, there is a guy at the gate, or at the door. Sorry, I forgot to say. We, I guess we're starting to score. <laughs> I forgot to say that. We, there's a whole process. So now, now we're starting to score. You guys are at warehouse 26. You can see that the cars, that Paul is there. There's a guard at the door in a suit similar to, you know, your typical gangster. And we're going to jump into the score. Wow. That's what happens when you don't play for a while. You just get into role play. You can fucking role play all night. <laughs> you don't even need a fucking rule set. No, we just tell you stories. Know? So. Please pause for a moment for more sponsors. Yeah. Well, that's right. We don't have any. If you'd like to sponsor us, please check us out Patreon. It's so like our whole plan here is basically vengeance. But yeah, it basically this this whole this whole um, campaign is basically a revenge campaign. <coughs> you kind of get your revenge on price, and then wherever the campaign blossom from there. But we're just gonna probably probably end it until we get a bigger player base. That is okay. Here we go. Uh, score, engagement roll. All right, here we go. So, what are you guys doing? What is your plan here? So, there's a lot of people, dense location. It's kind of difficult to really kill somebody in that kind of situation. I figure, get him on his way out. Kind of deal when he's worn down from fighting, okay. if, he, if he is fighting. Good idea. Kind of thing there, and uh, do it quickly and quietly, kind of deal. If at all possible, like kind of like knife in the neck. So like very light, very light load. Okay, so, first we need, um, uh, what's going to be the, what's the detail? Is it going to be like an assault, a deception, a stealth, social, or transport? Sounds like an assault, but it could yeah, also stealth. be a deception or a stealth. Yep, definitely a, more on the deception side, I think, because like you know we're playing like we're there to to be like a uh, like an assault would be like you know <laughs> just going to blasting the place like crazy. But uh, this is more like we're pretending to be like we're watching a fight and we're just waiting for an opportunistic moment to do what we need to do. Think. So it's up to you guys. Deception or self? It does have bits of both, but stealth is unseen. Deception is being unseen in a, in a crowd, kind yeah, of thing. So deception, deception sure, for then. sure. Yeah. So to lure, trick, or manipulate. All right, sounds good. And. Uh, the detail is you're going to catch him on the way out and get him then. Basically what we're thinking. <laughs> okay, so that's the plan, <laughs> okay, and then we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the plan. Sounds good. Now, your engagement role. You're going to catch him on the way out. Is it uh, particular bold or daring? You're going to kill somebody basically in broad, not daylight, it's going to be nighttime, but still on the street outside of a fighting club. So that's pretty daring. That's one for daring. Uh, does, it, does it expose the vulnerability of the target? I'm going to say you're going to try and get them when they're spent. Yep. So mm -hmm. I'll give another one for you, for sure. you got friends or contacts that provided insight. Bingo. Yep. Good. Target is a lower tier. Nope. Uh, district modifiers. You are in... No, none there, because you guys are both fighting over the same area. Okay, major disadvantages. It's not overly complex. You're going to catch him outside and kill him. That's the plan, so that's good. Mm -hmm. The target is uh, strong against this approach. 
No, because you're going to catch him while he's weak. Okay, I'm going to take one away for there's a possible rival interference because he's not going to be alone, most likely. And the target is at a higher tier than you. So, you guys get two dice for your engagement roll. Now, uh, let's go. We got fours. Okay, I think four starts you in a risky position. Okay. So you guys are starting in a risky, a risky position. So you are outside with, with Godfrey. You see this, and now we've done that. We're back to the, uh, back to the cars and the guy at the door. Okay. All right, and uh, I guess uh, Avery would. Uh... And so Godfrey, did he have his own vehicle by chance to bring us, or? Was, uh... Uh, he, he met you there. I imagine he brought his own vehicle, yeah. Okay, gotcha. He's, he's a manager now down at the docks, shipbuilding, so he's uh, making a fair bit of coin. Alright, so... Let's see... Okay, good. This is the only page I need, literally, to run the entire score. <laughs> So, let's see... Now we go in? Okay. Alright. Are you ready? Oh yeah. No, absolutely. Now, before we go in there, I spoke with Vlad. Yes? He says you're up to something. Not just information. Now, if you come and level with me, perhaps I can help. Oh, we're here to kill somebody who killed Max Lover. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Vlad does not like the low tide gang so much. So anything I could do to repay him, he's done good things for me. Bringing me from the motherland here, I would have wallowed away in nothing. But I am here, so I will consider this a favor for him. Much appreciated. So, shall we? Of course. You guys begin to walk in the door, um, you walk up to the gate, and since you're with Godfrey, uh, he nods to the guy at the door, and the guy opens the door, and you guys all go in together. He does look at you both, but he just looks at you guys. He gives the, uh, gatekeeper a nod for door doorman. <laughs> He's got this just ugly mug on his mouth, you know, doesn't really, doesn't look like he wants to be here, looks like he wants to be inside, not on the door, watching on the outside of the warehouse. God, it's an operator. Was she playing with them? No, she was looking at them. I, I could tell. <laughs> They're not food either. <laughs> and you guys go in. And I would say, it's only about, like I said, a 30 by 40 room. There's a 20, there's a 15 by 15 kind of, kind of ring in the middle of this place. But it just looks like it's uh, pallets and built up pieces of wood with just uh, rope from a ship kind of tied. And it's kind of bowing low to the ground because it's just so heavy. No fighting in there right now, but you can see people walking around, talking. You can see uh, people holding uh, glasses with, with liquor in them. And that's what you see. There seems to be uh, a fair amount of lights, a large uh, amount of light on the ring itself, and not so much around the outskirts of the ring. Okay. Speaking of people, uh, for, uh, I just want to see if, uh, he sees Paul in this. Because that would be the same person who, uh, hurt Cleo. Would he be the same person who messed up my hands? No, the, uh, giant did that to your hands. That was the giant, yeah. Gotcha, okay. All right. Let's see. He's going to just do a survey here. Oh, that's 
a four. Just gonna see if he sees anybody who might look familiar to him or might uh, seem familiar. Might also be good for Cleo to do that too, so that. Remember, you guys, to help you guys can um, uh, give aid. You take a stress and you give someone help. You can push yourself to stress and you get an extra dice. Mm -hmm. um, those two things. So if you wanted to help her, if, she, if you want, if uh, Cleo wanted to help you with the uh, with the survey, she'd have to help you beforehand, which I'll still give you the option since we're jumping back to the rules yeah, again. Okay, so mark down a stress and you roll an extra dice. Okay, sure. It's a five. Five? Okay, pumped it up by one. Good, good. I'm going to say that was a, uh, a risky position for a standard effect. So you look around and yeah, you see them. Easily enough, you can see uh, you can see the group of, of Price's boys. Um, Cleo, you can see Paul. There, easy enough. You can also see Avery. You can also see the giant. Cool. He's there because he stands a foot taller than anybody in this entire place. Hence the name. Hence the name, exactly. He's a freak. He's freakishly tall. <clears throat> He's not currently holding a hammer, though. However. Uh, as you're looking around, you can see, uh, Cleo, you can see Paul, and as, uh, you guys are looking around, Paul, and most of the gang looks in that direction as somebody comes in, everybody kind of looks at them briefly, and, uh, you know, Paul kind of looks at you guys both, and the, uh, the, the eyes linger for just a moment too longer, but then they, they drift away. So, I'm going to be starting a... Countdown, six countdown. I'm not going to add anything into it. It's just going to be started. So you just have six slots before the the, the your font your found out clock goes off. Gotcha. And grievous things will most likely happen. You said grievous. I said grievous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it seem like they're starting to organize a fight by chance? It uh, it only takes a few moments. It's that uh, you guys can just now. Hear the whistles of the bells from the ships, and it seems to be most of the ships let off a whistle at this time of night. Seems to be shut down time or shift change or something of that sort. But then uh, you can hear the talking begins to get louder and hear them louder, and everybody seems to start slowly migrating towards the middle of the uh, the middle of the warehouse. Should we declare our items before we? Thank you. You already said light. I said light. Yeah, so. which one do you want? Light, medium, or heavy? Uh, I'll go with light as well, but do, so, do we need to like, define what we want? No, nope, you do that as it happens. Okay. Yep. Can I use the fine disguise kit? So that she maybe would have made herself look a little less recognizable. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we can uh, retcon you do that beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, for okay. sure, absolutely, yep. So yeah, just take that off in your thing, and okay. uh, you have your Every other fine thing. disguise kit. Oh. Perfect. Maybe you wear a baseball cap. <laughs> baseball cap. Would they have those back in the twenties? It would have been more like a poor boy hat, I like think. Like a trilby. And uh, people begin to start corralling around the ring, and the lights outside dim even more, and the lights on the inside brighten up even more. And you can see two guys enter the ring, and uh, a referee, and the referee calls out. Uh, there's no microphone or anything like that. He's just hollering in from from his uh, his own masterful voice box, and he says, "Welcome everybody! Welcome! All your bets can be taken by this man here and this man over here. In this corner, we have we have Gerald, and it's just I mean, the the first you know the first match of the night. These guys." Don't look right. exactly. There's barely anybody clapping because everybody knows the first couple matches are just to get everybody drunk and get everybody up. So and he says, "In this corner, we have Derek, and fight." And he walks out of the ring, and you can just see it's it's just a a poor showing of a fight. You know, it's just a poor showing. It's uh, they're hitting each other and stuff. The, the eventually the the match gets called on no contest, and uh, another match or two goes by. They need to keep their day jobs. <laughs> uh, some betting is made. If you guys wanted to bet any coin, you could, but uh, any little bits of money you may have uh, won or lost. But then 
you guys can see off to the, to the side there that uh, the group of um, Prices men, the group of Prices men seem to be getting uh, Paul ready. You know, he's, he's taking off his uh, his suit jacket and he's kind of wrap, not wrapping his hands up because it's bitter knuckle boxing. Uh, but you do see him take a, a couple strong shots of whiskey and, and he looks like he might be might be up next. And then uh, Godfrey kind of uh, bends over to talk to him. He says, so what is your plan? What are you doing? Kill him in here? What, what are you doing? Well, he kind of just looks, uh, looks uh, over to Godfrey and he just says, well, we're going to probably get him on the way out. Yeah. With, with all of his cronies over there, he's got like 13 guys. Cleo swings her head and looks at Avery. Didn't think that one through, did you? No, apparently not. Ah, uh, well. Let's see. He just kind of wraps his fingers and he just uh, thinks, well. They're all going to be following him out. It's a bit difficult to pin where to get him. He walks into the car, they'll be there, they're probably armed. Bathroom? You say bathroom. You look off to the corner, and there's a guy just pissing in the corner. That's the extent of the bathroom in this warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's dark. In the corners. <laughs> Not secluded. Okay. He just kind of like fingers through a couple things and thinks for a moment. And he just kind of pieces, like if he's looking around. Do they? Do any of the guys have to go like outside, like to smoke? No, they would smoke inside. Smoke inside. Yep. Anybody go outside for any other reason? Not that you've seen. Seems to be the event happening right now. Is it like a catwalk or like a gallery at the top? No, it's a short warehouse. Oh, one level. Yeah, just one level warehouse. Yeah. Well, I guess we're killing everybody inside. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You two seem confused. Do you not think this through? You would kill a man in public, you, you must have a plan. Oh. Indeed. And then you can uh, see the lights uh, brighten up again as the next match comes on. You can see Paul walk up. And he says, And for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, we have, you, we have the Bulldog, Paul Crenshaw. And the, most of his crew just starts roaring, and there's a lot of people around, too, that start uh, <laughs> clapping and cheering. And then he gestures to this side, and his competitor today! Where's... You can see him blow uh, air out of his nose. He seems snorting. He walks over to the other side, his hands are up, and he seems to be yelling, Where is he? Where is he? Oh God! <laughs> so, does Avery have any background as a boxer? No, he's a <laughs> he's a barkeep. He'd be right up there in the middle <laughs> for everybody, including the giant who beat him to a beat his hands into a fucking mash to see. That would be very bad. All right, backpedal. That may not happen when you're going with that. Oh, it has an it has an exit. It is an exit. Hasn't happened yet, but oh, crap. you can see there's uh, there's some mumbling going around, and uh, there's now somebody goes outside and kind of opens the door and looks up and looks back, puts his head back in and shakes his head, and then the uh, guy gets back in the ring and he says. Well, it looks like Anthony, the competitor, is not showing up tonight. Is there anybody that wants to fight the bulldog? Good coin in it for you. A good purse if you can knock him down, and half the purse if you survive to the end. Anybody? And then he looks around the crowd, and he kind of looks at you guys. He says, and he points directly at you guys. And he says, 
Godfrey, is that you? And Godfrey kind of speaks up. Ah, Godfrey is here, yes. I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not uh, really into fighting tonight. So, just hearing that, uh, Avery just kind of like, he kind of like slinks back a little bit behind a couple of uh, other folks, kind of like... You know, jabs him in the ribs. <laughs> a bony finger. What's he <laughs> doing? This could be a chance. To die. So, the yeah, other's been a stress, and uh, for a flashback, and as he announces that, he starts looking around, like, where, where's the competitor? Where's Anthony? He, uh, kind of like leans in close to Godfrey and he says you wouldn't be able to at least try to hang in there and try to fight him there for a bit would you? And he says so uh, you don't need to give us a cent of what you make it's just not about money Crenshaw's Crenshaw's booty but for Vlad I suppose I could so just this was a flashback for sure. Was a flashback. Okay, so Mark, um, uh, yeah, Mark, too stressed for that one. Each? Or? No, just one. Oh. Yes. And uh, he says, "For Vlad, I will do this for you." And then he puts up his hand. Godfrey is here. Godfrey is here. And he rips his shirt off, and he, he walks <laughs> up to the uh, to the ring, and he steps in. And uh, then you see the crowd really going nuts. And uh, they get up there, and the, the fight begins to start. You know, it's and he starts again. In this corner, we have the bulldog, and in this corner, we have Godry, the Russian tank. And then you hear this uh, the ding that has happened on every one, but I didn't say. The ding goes off, and the fight begins. You guys can hear people uh, betting money, You're like, oh, I'm gonna 200 on Godry, 200 on Crenshaw, and making all these absurd, absurd bets. And the fight. The fight begins. Now, the fight is going to be a, a six o'clock fight, and they're going to be fighting each other. I'm going to make it a four o'clock fight because I can get a lot. And it's going to go by round. Every round, one of them's going to get it, and it's going to tick, and it's going to be uh, whoever gets their clock filled up first knocks the other person out. Okay. Sure. So, what are you guys doing during the first round? Now, you can do anything to distract, to help the fight, hurt the fight in some way, that you, any way you can think of. To help the fight or hurt the fight. People throw things in the ring? Probably not here. Probably not at the main event. But definitely in those lower ones, you've seen some people throwing some shit in the ring, for sure. Especially that no contest fight at the beginning, absolutely. <laughs> Um, let's see, oh, uh, for that, it's bare knuckle boxing, so like putting a chair in the ring wouldn't be, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really, <laughs> but, okay, first round, uh, Godfrey, comes out with a, f uh, a flurry of hits and criticals. He rolled two sixes. Oh, God. He's going to knock two triangles off of Crenshaw's uh, pie chart as he just gets two good punches in. Just one across the face and one across the other side of the face. You can see Crenshaw stumble back a little bit, but then he seems to come back and with, the, with his fists up. Avery just kind of furrows his brow and pressed, and uh, he kind of f f tries to like f pick out. Well, it's the first round, so he um, the first like little round of exchanges there. So he kind of just takes a look. He's mostly looking for an opening because there's too many people. An opening for what? Fucking shoot him. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, sure. 
Well, that opening is there. I mean, there's... That option is definitely there. He first, he'll, uh... He'll, he'll just uh, kind of look over to uh, Cleo as the fight's starting and everybody's getting rowdy. He kind of gets close and he just says, I'm just going to fucking shoot him. Avery. <laughs> Am I going to just shoot you? Think about what they did to Daphne. Ooh, that's playing on heartstrings. <laughs> I can't lose both of you. You guys can see uh, the two men that were pointed out walking around the ring in in circles and says, Taking your bets! Taking your bets! People are going over them, giving them money, you know, taking the bets for, for Godry and uh, and Paul as they're, they're duping it out, say them, you know, three minute rounds kind of thing as they're, they're still going. And this is where uh, Godry kind of really does them in, but then uh, if you guys, I'll give you like one thing to do per round. I do, or uh, Cleo if you wanted to do anything. Um, so I'll use a stress point for a flashback. Uh, yeah, two stress. Two well, stress. it depends. It's one. It's between one and three. It depends how much you want to do in that flashback. Okay. If it's something simple, it's one. If it's something really, really extravagant, it would be three. Um, so in a flashback, I would have um, kind of weaseled my way into someone who was maybe doing the serving and spiked his drink to make him weaker. Okay, so you have your uh, your disguise on. Yes. So perfect. Okay, yes. so um, I'll get you. Uh, yeah. So that's gonna happen, and uh, the server is there. So I'll paint the image for you then. He has about a dozen of his cronies hanging around him. Him. The main guys are the giant and Crenshaw, but uh, the rest of them are just there as a part of the entourage kind of thing. And you can, can I see change something here. Yeah. <laughs> what if instead of that we had it sort of like we dropped off the alcohol for the event, there you go. and all of it had something in it to kind of make everybody a little bit groggy. Ooh, there you there. go. Okay. Kind of dull out the whole room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe would have told Godfrey not to drink it. Oh, uh, that's true. Doug, I'd say Godfrey didn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So that's uh. Then, uh, okay, so then, role play that. You go to the catering company, or not the catering company, I guess the, um... be underhanded, so, because it's all prohibited, so... Just like a little swap in the back. Yeah, So we would they, come around a few hours before seeing the crates that have been dropped off for the perfect. event. And we swap them out with a little home brew. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. One, uh, a little brew that's a little bit off. A little wow. bit off. One of the first brews. A little bit off. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so mark mark uh, two stress for that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, when you quickly flash back to, to that, then you guys can see Paul just three shots in a row. Bang, bang, bang. Just like that, and then move off into the ring, and then the fight begins. Okay, perfect. Explains why you got the crit. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Though. That's perfect, yeah. So from uh, every round... I'm going to be taking the dice away from Crenshaw because of that. Hey, dice. Okay. I think I rolled three from last time anyway, so that, that made sense. Perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, so that uh, that happens. You can see him drink, the, uh, drink those three shots, go in the ring, and just immediately, boom, boom, right in the face. But he looks like he's recoiled a bit, kind of uh, uh, had some... Cut some resolve, and he's getting back up into it. Round two. Make a little. Ah, oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this time he seems to gather his resolve, and Crenshaw seems to be on the offensive. He gets a couple good shots in, and uh, wins out Godfrey, uh, Godfrey on this particular round. But it was an even go, as uh, Godfrey did roll a five, but. Uh, Crenshaw rolled a six over top of him. So Crench, uh, Godfrey takes a square this time. This is round two. One, round two. Okay. That. I'm just trying to think of what to do. Okay. 
I imagine at the end of a round they take a moment to rehydrate. Yep. Yep. Rehydrate. <laughs> yes. So he just, you know, gulps back another big cup of sleepy yep. time. That thing's going to be uh, steady through roll the, uh, uh, through the next couple of rounds until he's down to rolling with disadvantage. Right, and I'm going to do a flashback as well. Yep. And Avery would have just taken a couple of bottles of liquor and had them basically all prepped up to tinker with the bottles so that they are basically Molotovs, but the cloth is hidden underneath the cap. Interesting. You make more bombs. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you what, you can take three stress for that since it's concealed, or you can roll um, roll something to off to offset it. Roll a tinker to get it, because yeah, okay. like, it is a bottle of liquor, so tinker. I have two dice for that, actually. Two dice. So take uh, two stress for the four. Two stress. And I'm only bringing one. Okay. One Sounds one. good. And that's just a, uh, just a insurance. <laughs> he kind of wants to throw that at the giant. Set him on fire for what he did to his hands. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> All right, uh, Cleo, you just, you did that flashback last time. Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to do anything this round? Maybe have a drink? No. <laughs> if not, we can. Let's we'll go keep going. Try. Yeah, we'll just keep going. Okay. So you guys can see the start. Everybody's starting to, to gather right now. We're on round three. We're getting into it, right? And talk to you guys from him, yeah. Here we go. Let's okay, here we go. It was, uh, this one went on to the bitter end, but they were hitting each other back and forth. They both rolled the six. And uh, he was beaten out by the second number. Uh, Crenshaw gets the upper hand and clips uh, Godfrey in the face. You can see a tooth and blood squirt out on the ground. Oof. And uh, and then the bell goes for the uh, <laughs> for the end of the round. Or not yet. I suppose that this round goes through and uh, Godfrey takes another. Godfrey takes another quarter. And then you guys have another another option to do it. Now you don't have to do anything. You just sit there and watch the fight, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But if you want something or to do something, maybe uh, anything really, position yourselves in a good place, discreetly, quietly. Yeah, Avery's going to position himself near the near the door, like enough to where like a couple seconds sprint would be enough to get out. Okay, uh, from, yeah, that would just be on the one side of the ring, closer to the door. You could be yep. anywhere near the door, no problem. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. He's going to position himself there. And he's, I'm just going to keep an eye out and just see who is drinking on there, on the, between Price's boys. Everybody. Everybody's drinking. Everybody is drinking. Yes. Okay. Um, this... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, go ahead. Um, would there be, like, a tray with glasses on it with more drinks in them? Yeah. Just kind of sitting there, maybe? Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll grab that. Walk around. Hand out some more to the, his goons. <laughs> Just be like, oh, drink up, drink up. Okay. <laughs> so I'll get you to roll something for that. Um, Under resolve. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of sway. A bit too. this way. Oh. 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 That's two ones. That's a fail. Um, I'm gonna push. Uh, I'm gonna add a stress. That's too late. Oh, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is you go around. Um, you just, just drop the tray. Can I just, just drop the tray? <laughs> <laughs> no, the tray. Uh, the tray. I guess the tray does drop because maybe you were uh, caught slightly off guard as the giant uh, kind of grabs you by the arm. 
dressed by the army, you're in your your, your get up. You mm -hmm. can't see. What is your get up actually? What did you dress up as? Um, I would have put on like kind of a ridiculous but not too fake looking like red wig, longer hair. Cause she normally has like short dark hair. Yeah. Um, some nicer clothes than her class would probably be expected to wear. I wasn't just speak. Okay. Really nice shoes. Nice, I guess. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Maybe pair of glasses that she doesn't really wear. Okay, there you go. On the top. <laughs> so as you were walking through, uh, through the gang, passing, they're just grabbing the glasses off and you know, uh, and beginning to drink them. But the giant, he grabs you by the arm. And I guess maybe uh, you drop the tray, and there's only two or three drinks left. They fall off, and they smash on the ground. And he says, uh, I recognize you. And he takes his other hand, and he puts it along the scar on the side of your face. I didn't mention about covering. Huh? But I didn't say I covered. Next round. <laughs> and he's on one dice now. Next, he's on a disadvantage. Okay, this time, Godfrey, he seems to be, or this time, Crenshaw seems to be a little bit more lethargic on the defensive this time, trying to keep, just trying to keep Godfrey out, and Godfrey's just pummeling the sides of his ribcage and his, and his abdomen, and uh, gets one up on him. Crenshaw's not looking too good. <sighs> Avery, you see over the giant. by the giant. He's got her by the hand and he's just kind of, he just drew his finger across her face. None of the other crew is paying attention to this. None of the other crew. They're all seem to be taken by the alcohol. Everybody's getting pretty drunk, pretty drunk. I mean, you've been through three fights already, so it's been maybe, maybe an hour already, right? So a whole lot of people are getting drunk. Yeah, and most of the attention is on the fight, not back here where you get, they kind of have I want to say like a lounge area, but it's like barrels and boxes that they're literally sitting on, where everybody else has to stand up, and and there's only standing room only. It's your VIP. Except exactly. Yes, the VIP, the VIP section. Okay, so he has to get Cleo out of there somehow because he's gonna rip her in half. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, <worse. laughs> So as he sees the giant kind of grab her and kind of draw a finger across her scar just something just kind of snaps in him a little bit and he grabs that Molotov and uh, he doesn't uncap it so it just looks like a bottle of liquor okay and he, mo he moves closer and closer and he It's about to hit the fan. <laughs> I think I can <laughs> tell that. So the second I had a finger grow down my face, I was like, ah! So a lot of the people around them are drunk, and like everybody's drunk, and except for Avery, he didn't drink. Cleo didn't drink. Godfrey didn't drink. Crenshaw's getting the shit kicked out of him at the moment, and he takes. He, he how close would he be able to get? before the people in that gang start noticing him because he's going to walk up to the giant well if you want to yeah that, that would be a roll a check roll yeah, yeah. i get you to roll something for that crowd a little bit you know make it make it a little less although you're like barrel head you're not really so this would could be uh yeah he, oh so i think could be prowl could be finesse i would uh i would more lean on prowl yeah I'm or prowl. even even consort, because consorting is like hanging out with a group. You're just kind of coming in. Hey, guys, yeah, let's have another drink. Uh, fight, what a fight, eh? Hey, kind of thing. So um, those, those are two e easy options. Like, uh, Would there be like an errant bottle that's open on the way? Like uh, just like somewhere on a barrel or something? Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yes. Yeah, so like a, Listen, that didn't work so well for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so like a prowl, a consort. Even a sway, I would even say, would, would be manageable. Because uh, consorts, more like um, going in and hanging out with them, trying to get information, but either way, it's, it's either way is a stretch. Getting getting in there is, uh, yeah, so it's like sway, so, prowler, consort, any one of those things would be more than acceptable. Avery is going to push himself to stress, and he is going to consort don't roll ones. Oh, no guarantees. Okay. 
even. All right. He's going to roll kind of sword, and he comes up, smoke in his hand, two bottles and a lighter, and one's uncorked. And he kind of just offers it around to the gang. And he says, Hi, hey, guys. Here, take this bottle, take this bottle. And he gestures the one that's uncapped. I need to have a free eye to light and smoke. That's a six. Okay. Double you, sixes. Very nice. You get literally right up next to the giant. One of his cronies is beside him, takes the bottle from you easily enough and just kind of downs it right there. You know, just his, his, he's like up here, so his, he's not paying any attention with the bottle in his mouth. He uncaps the other one, goes to make like he's taking a drink, lights the bottle, and just smashes it across the back of the giant's head. And... So that would be... Uh, that would be a check for sure. Uh, <laughs> um, and what is the range of these weapons, and how close am I? He is... You're swing, right there, and you still have an act against is, you. You can still do something. He's swinging it down and away from Cleo, but on to the giant. So this is, uh... I would give you, yeah, whatever you would like to skirmish or finesse. Is, uh, finesse might be... Might be good for where you're trying to get. Yeah. You're trying to angle that attack to a certain place. Oh, right. A little okay. finesse. I'd like to the dodge action, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's another six. Okay, yeah, you crack him right on the back of the neck. And because he's so giant, the fire that does explode goes around Cleo altogether because you're just in the shadow. He grabbed you by the arm and pulled you right in underneath to, to draw his hand across your across your face, and his whole back lights up. His suit catches on fire. A few of the guys around him start catching on fire. Cleo, you see this happen. Why Avery walk up alive? out of nowhere and smash. Um, I take the opportunity to see if his grip has loosened <laughs> on me. Oh god. And try to like, move so away from him. Cause you're trying to get away? Yeah. Okay. Can I roll a... Would that be a finesse? Yes, yeah, most away? certainly, yeah. Okay, I have three of that. There, there you go. go, you should get away from that easily enough. Six? Six. Yeah. His oh, grip God. loosens, you slip out of the way you're wearing these uh, uh, these long gloves, long silk gloves, and the, his hand just slips right off the glove, you pull away. And you can see that now, he is on fire. The giant, uh, the giant is on fire. Avery slips away into the crowd, and he puts the lighter back in his pocket, and he walks a little bit further away from the uh, Price gang, having set him ablaze, and the fight in the middle of the ring. How is that going? Uh, have they so we, we haven't, they were just finishing that, the they haven't started the next round yet. <laughs> so the fight is effectively, the, him and Sir, they're still finishing their last bit of, about back and forth where uh, Crenshaw took the couple of cup shots to the ribs and, and, and the abdomen and then smash, explosion behind him. That's where we're at. Okay. So we had that, you did that, Heidi, uh, or sorry, Cleo, you pulled away from him, what are you going to do? I'm going to pull out my little cute pistol that I keep. In my back pocket, mm -hmm. and shoot him in the gut. Okay, all right. That's uh, that's a finesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finesse, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a success. Bang! It echoes throughout the warehouse. This loud shot. <laughs> no, he's got big enough. It would have muffled this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and Avery also pulls out his pistol. So you're not moving off in the crowd. You're gonna pull out the pistol. Yep. Okay, perfect. And and next. Aim it at the he aims it at the bulldog, indeed. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. Shooting him in the back, too. His yeah. back's towards you guys right now. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. It's going to be a skirmish for him because, well, <laughs> these are always blowing shit up. This is fantastic, <laughs> man. We started right. that way, though. <laughs> yeah. You are not shadows. No. <laughs> at all. It's Isn't that what we're supposed to be? We're supposed to be cloak and dagger. We're like glowing <laughs> shit. Fuck up. All right. So, that's a skirmish for sure. I yep. I got two in that. So. <laughs> that's a five. Okay, yeah, you shoot Crenshaw. 
in the back. Fills up his last, um, his last, uh, his last thing there. And I'm gonna say because he rolled those two ones. Remember, I put, I said we had the six counter for they know the jig is up. I'm gonna put one counter in the six. Just, 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 and just, I feel just. the gunshot, the fire doesn't put a counter in that. I think Not the gunshot. Yeah, that's cool. Looking back, the gunshot, the fire will put it probably right up to six. You're right. More than likely, yeah. You have to kill ourselves. Are found out, but however, you guys are in the midst of combat now, so it's it's, yeah. it's, it's your fa- Yeah, it's okay. And everybody is drunk and drugged. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to our advantage there a little bit. Oh, no, it definitely is. And uh, so we're going to recount how this comes off. Avery, you smash him in the back with the Molotov, explodes on his back. He lets go of Cleo. Cleo pulls out her gun, shoots him in the belly. You pull out your gun right in front of uh, the giant and shoot Crenshaw in the back. Crenshaw is shot in the back, falls into, um, falls into Godry. He rolled the one, and Godry rolled the six, and just at that same time, Godry comes off with a right hand and just smacks him in the chin. Oh. And I'm going to say there's a resounding crack as Crenshaw hits the ground. And now, people are yelling and running for the door. There's guys on the ground trying to pat themselves out. A few guys are drawing weapons. Yep. Okay. And so, how many are drawing weapons, roughly? You roll a fortune roll on that. Um, let's see. Very poor roll. One. One guy is drawing a gun. And uh, it was the guy beside Crenshaw that took the bottle from you. Okay. And Avery, seeing him draw a weapon with a four, shoots at him with his pistol. Okay. Um, response seeing a four the same. Okay, clear to yeah, just, uh, I guess one, one it's turn-based, turn based, so we can I'm just trying to make sure we don't, uh, we don't lose track of terms there, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's okay. You can go all the way. Okay, Avery's also moving backward towards the door as he's shooting, too. Certainly. Ah, I forgot that position and effect. God damn it. But it's okay, you guys were rocking it anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> um, so you roll a four, you said? Four, yeah. Four, okay, so that... Um, it's, like a, it's like five and six are the good ones. Yeah, you do... And you, who did you shoot, sorry? The guy who drew the gun. The guy drew the, the gun. gun. Yeah, okay, so you shoot, and you, uh, you pull your gun, and you shoot. You shoot him, but at the same time, he still shoots you. That's the four, that's the consequence. So you're going to take a uh, level two harm. Two harm. Shoulder wound. I just healed up from one of those. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Okay, and now Avery, seeing the giant on fire, still, he's probably still standing. No, I shot him. Cleo, yeah. Cleo, you rolled a six for your shot? What'd you roll? Two fives. Two fives? Okay. Two fives. Um, that's right. Sounding out. Okay, and on that, I'm going to start another countdown of four to the police are on site. And those gunshots are going to be the first one off. Okay, perfect. And uh, recounting that, good. Crenshaw went down. Avery. Okay, all right. He's just gonna go ahead and turn and start. Is, is the giant down yet, or is he still up? He's still up. He's okay. still up. He's a bit of a higher tier than you guys. He. Yeah. He's gonna start. He's gonna shoot him again. Skirmish. That's a six. Oh, very nice. Okay, six. Yeah, you shoot him again. He's um, high up. Center mass. <laughs> center mass. All right. Fire on the back. Belly shot. He kind of kind of bends over a little, and you can just catch him right in the chest, and you pop! Another loud noise. You can see more guys scrambling for the door. You can hear the door opening and slamming, and you can hear cars starting up and beginning to, to move away. As the giant falls to his knees, blood in his hands, he falls down into his chest, still on fire. And 
Avery just a, kind of a sickening smile between all the chaos comes across his face and he just he just starts turning towards the door and he just looks over to Cleo and he just gestures to get the fuck out <laughs> because he got shot Bulldog got shot twice he got shot twice center mass and he's on fire <laughs> And other people are on fire. Yep. Speaking of fire, is it has it spread anywhere else? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. All those boxes and crates are starting to catch on fire, and a bit of the rain now is beginning to catch on fire. And we know that Paul is dead, right? Don't know for sure. Don't know for sure. If he fucking shoots him again. No, it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Go ahead, Cleo. Uh, is the guy in front of me dead yet? The giant. Uh, he giant. looks like he's on fire and not moving. Okay, I'm satisfied. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna charge for the ring. Okay. I wanna make sure he's dead. Certainly, you uh, climb the ring. It's easy enough to do to dodge the fire about. Yep. And I'm gonna survey. Yep. But he appears to still be alive. His chest is. Heaving in and out, but he seems to be unconscious. I'm gonna shoot him. Okay. Right in the head. You got it. You got it. <laughs> With a finesse for oh. exceptional. Well, the five and one. Five's alright. <laughs> As uh, you shoot, you walk up to him cold. You roll play. <clears throat> I was gonna sneeze there for a second. Um, yeah, smoky. so I just collide. It is smoky in here. It's very <laughs> thick That's in the sure. air. It's got the it's got the layer. You nice. can see it. You like the old fashioned bars. Yeah. She just swings one very nice high heel over that rope. Climbs up into the ring. Gives him a kick. Sees his chest still moving. So she just points her cute, dainty little pistol right at the back of his skull and lets one go. All right. Pop. Goes off, echoing about again, and the uh, the ring begins to start pooling with blood. Pooling with blood. Then she runs like hell. <laughs> and uh, Godfrey is right behind you. Okay. Godfrey is right behind you. And you're gonna run as well. Exactly. Okay, okay so I'm gonna need you guys to uh... roll for running. Yeah, and you want you to... I want you to roll for for running out of there. Um, and just, what does a level one harm give you? I don't know. Does it say there? He's a little... Level one harm is what? less less effect? What harm did I give you? I thought you gave me two. two. Level, what is a level, yeah. Two. Give me a level two, so that's minus, minus one minus dice. Minus one dice. Okay, so you're minus one dice to, to everything. Okay. Alright, so I'm probably going to be running... That's a weird, that's a weird rule, because there's no real, like, thing for... Well, I guess... Prowl? Finesse? I would, the, there's still a bunch of people trying to get through the door. A bunch of drunkards and half, you know, sleepy kind of people trying to make their way to the door. Skirmish. Because I gotta, like, shove them out of my way. Perfect. That anything that, you know, makes sense is yep. that that's all they want. They want the role play to make sense is all. Yeah, that's perfect. Gotcha. So but if you don't more. have any... Yeah, if you have zero pips, it's yeah. two dice and take the lowest. Oh. Yeah. But you can push yourself. I did. I did. I. I said that before the dice left your hand. You can still push your so You can take yeah, that. Yeah. Then I go into trauma. Oh. Oh, that bad. <laughs> so okay. we're gonna have to leave it with the one that I just rolled. No problem. I got a three. I got a three. You got a three. Okay. So what happens is, as you guys begin to run, got uh, Godry's running to the door as well. Uh, Avery. You get bumped and you get and you trip on somebody and you fall to the ground and you, another drunk falls on top of you. As you're leaving, um, as you're leaving out the door, Cleo, you can hear gunshots go off from behind you, and you get winged. A level one harm called winged. Again. Yeah. Jeez. As it's kind of like. Uh, Yeah, just it kind of catches you in, in the side, like one of those, a, a shot on the side. 
and you make it outside. Godfrey is also outside. Avery, you're still inside. I gotta get this drunk off. I rolled worse out. than he did. Though. <clears throat> Sorry. But I rolled worse than he did. I rolled the one near the three. Oh yeah, that's why you got shot. He just fell down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've already oh, been you shot. Rolled, you rolled a one? I rolled a one. Make that level two harm. Okay. Make that a level two harm. And another tick on the piece. That is a one. That is a one. That's a one. Okay, so as Avery, as you stand up, you get the guy off you, you stand up. Um, there's a shoulder on your back. A shoulder on your back. There's a hand on your shoulder. You can feel as you start to get up. And then it's blackness. Cleo, you make it outside with Godfrey. What do you do? I turn and look for Avery. He doesn't come out. You see other people coming out, a drunk here, a drunk there. Godfrey says, My car, it's over there. Can't leave Avery. Where is Avery? He looks around. Dark back inside. Okay, so you move back inside and yeah. you can. Uh, uh, there's still guys <clears throat> pouring out, um, but you can see in the door. As uh, if you want to roll something to get inside, you yeah, can. Yeah, that'd be the skirmish again. Yep, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So three is the lower. Three is the lower. Are you you roll one zero? Yeah. Okay, so you're not able to get through the door because there's too many guys coming out, but you can see that one of Price's guys is dragging uh, Avery to the opposite end, where you can also see a door kind of uh, flapping. Run around the building. And run around the building. <laughs> run around the building. It's not that big. That's perfect, yeah. Kick off okay. my shoes and run in my bare feet. Okay. <laughs> that. So you guys run around the building and you get to the corner, you and Godfrey. Is Godfrey there? He was, well, did he come or did he go to his car? I'm gonna see, I'm gonna fortune roll. If it's high, he's gonna come with you. If it's low, he's gonna duck out of here. He's wary when he's coming with you. Okay. He's concerned because he's not wearing a shirt. <laughs> Emmy was just beaten, like his sock was he's, hot Yeah, he's he's bloody. He's ble bleeding from the mouth. He's lost a few teeth. So, uh, yeah, you guys make it to the back easy enough, and you can see uh, the last few people seem to come out, and the door smash open, and Avery kind of roll onto the ground unconscious. And then uh, two other men step out. Let's shoot. And you shoot, absolutely. <laughs> oh god. You you shoot, and um, so the first guy comes out, steps outside, and the door shuts. And you just you line up your shot to shoot, but the second guy opens the door at the same time, and it ricochets off the door. At that moment, the first guy that comes out looks at you, and shoots at you. Take another level to harm. Can you have more than... I think you can have two, you have two level two harms? Well, it'll be two level twos now. Oh, so you're in a level, though you're on the top shelf. Yeah, then you I'm take a. Dead. Oh, so it's. You go down. You take a third level harm and you fall to the ground unconscious. <laughs> Dang, now we're both unconscious. We've died. Game over. That happened quickly. <laughs> a really anticlimactic ending. I mean. We got Godfrey though. Let's see what he can do for us. So I'm thinking, Godfrey is still there. This is in the stair gauge, though, is that? No, not quite. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to give Godfrey. I'll get you guys to roll it. Godfrey can roll and uh, a skirmish with three dice. Okay. Yeah. I can roll it. Yeah. Yeah, my roll Four. That's a four? It's a four. Okay. So, Godry kind of, uh, I'm going to say, what's Godry going to do? He's going to skirmish with four. Everybody else is drunk, too. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. Okay, so... Uh, Very much drunk. Would that yeah. shot have been a disadvantage? No. No, 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 not these guys. The, this, this game is, it's different. Like, the bad guys don't get actions on you. 
It's just basically reactions to failures that okay. you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I'm trying. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to still work my head around it sometimes because yeah. it's not in my path of. Yeah. It's more like you judge it based on how badly the roles go. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's just how it's the reflection <laughs> of your poor roles. More poor roles, the better the bad guys do, I guess. Yeah. But um. So that was a. Four. I'm gonna give an opposed roll here. A little bit lower because uh, we're just not, are not on to your side today. Tonight. Okay, mm -hmm. you called at the end, and it's it's the end. But we can't leave it ending like that. That's terrible. Well, it's the dice, right? Yeah, but you gotta like give it a good. Oh yeah, no, just you got the. You got the it's side. like the Sopranos. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happens is uh, you guys. You guys come too. Avery first, a few short minutes later. Uh, you, Cleo, you guys Tie look around. Time. Your hands and feet are bound behind your back. And the front of you, you can see wood and you can hear water rippling. You kind of, you, you look up and you're on a dock. It's pitch black outside. And you can hear murmuring and people talking behind you. And you can hear this, um, this kind of thumping coming, hold on. Getting louder and louder to the dock, and you hear a voice that says, Well, looky here. I didn't think I would see your two faces again. Especially yours, my sweet. And he looks, kind of grabs your chin and pulls it towards him. You're right down on the ground face first, but uh, with all of his obesity and lethargy, he kind of bends down and grabs your face, Hadro Price, and he draws the mark, his finger across your face again. She, like, jerks her jaw away from his touch. And he, he stands up and kind of snares at you, and he, he kicks you in the ribs with his really weak, weakling lawyer kick. Still learns. <laughs> I've been shot in that side, that still hurts. That's right, yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Kicks me right in the bullet wound. <laughs> and uh, you guys can look also beside you, uh, Godfrey is there. But he looks even worse for wear now, like he's been in a bit of a fight. Uh, you know, one of his eyes is puffed up and it looks like he's got a, a weapon gash at his side. His shirt's all off and anything. And his shirt is all off and everything, so you guys can see he's tied up as well. And, he, and you guys can hear Pedro Price talking, and he says, So they killed my giant, and they killed my bulldog. He cuts him off. Pedro, you reputable fat fuck! You want to do anything to him, you do it to me. You leave him out of it. We didn't have anything to do with him. He didn't have anything to do with this. He was there at the wrong place at the wrong time. He caught us. We did everything. Everything is us. Get him up. Get me up. And one of the uh, well, <laughs> two of them try to kind of kind of bring you up. They're still. You guys can still kind of tell they're still kind of off, you know. And there's maybe maybe three or four guys that are new that you haven't seen that you're pretty sure aren't off. But you, they one of them and the other one kind of gets you up in each shoulder and he kind of looks at you and he takes his his uh, his cane and he kind of taps it on your forehead. Listen to me. You are mine. Am I? Doesn't quite seem like it there, Hadro. He pulls a gun out from his side and he puts it right to your neck. He pulls the, not the trigger, the, the hammer. He pulls it and says, you are mine. Is that I right? own you. And I own him. And he gets this really evil smile on his face and he says, and I own her. You will do what I tell you to do. Is that right? It is right. Well... Don't make him do something like that, please. For somebody who just killed two of your men, you're all being awfully generous there, you fat bastard. Generous? My generosity knows no bounds. And he moves his gun down to your hip and he shoots you in the leg. How, do you have two level two harms yet? Uh, one, yes, one. You do now. <laughs> Leg wound. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, I think I had that one coming. <laughs> Call it karma. <laughs> you guys want to do anything? I mean, you got a whole bunch of skills. Trying to get out or something like I'm, that. I'm like trying that. Like, I'm tying okay. my knots well. Okay. Um, I can't flash back because. Well, I can actually. Have you absolutely. Oh, that's right. Um, one, we'll see. Why one spot? I can before I hit trauma. Yep. So let's use one for a flashback. Four. Uh, I'm working on those knots with some finesse. Okay, so a flashback would be like, um, I'm going to flashback and I'm going to slip uh, a blade in my wrist. No, no, that's, <laughs> uh, uh, a I'll blade sure. somewhere where I can where I can get it in case yes. I happen to be detained. Yes. Okay. okay, so that's definitely one stress for that. And, uh, and you pull it out, your bounds on your hands are free. Start working on my feet, just behind my back. Okay, that might be... Uh, a roll, a deception, or, a okay. point, or something, perhaps. Um, but I'll even give you a finesse on that one. Will that be a finesse? Yeah, you can give you. Yeah. You, can I have your green dice? Yeah, sure. <laughs> These Avery, <are> first. <laughs> Avery pipes up. He's just kind of just goading at this point. You shot me up. If you want me to work for you, it's going to be hard to have a lame workhorse, isn't it there, Hadro? A oh, lame horse is always good for something, isn't it? And uh, that's when you can see one of the guys jump down on Cleo as she starts. You can see her hands are unbound and she just unbound her feet and he jumps down on top of you. But you are unbound. You just got somebody holding you down, but that's it. I... can I do something? You can absolutely do something. I'm gonna take that knife and just shove it right in his neck. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Skirmish that up. Or, wow. or, 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 or finesse, whatever you want. Yeah, right. It's the base with strength attack or dex attack from where I can think it. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. So, you, as he's jump, he, as he jumps down on top to, to kind of hold you down, you're still on your belly, you spin around on your back and you catch him right in the neck. The knife jabs right into his neck, blood squirts all out. Avery, you see that? So he, he, she stabbed the guy who got on top of her. Mm -hmm. Okay. When that happens, it would create an opportune moment for a flashback. And Avery too stuck a blade under one of his sleeves mm -hmm. much earlier. He's going to try to jimmy. Do you have enough room on your uh, out loadout for that? Yeah, I have light. I have the pistol. And that's the only thing I brought in, really. And the uh, Molotov. That was like a flashback. So. And, and you have three squares for your... Oh, yeah, the Molotov. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Pistol and a blade or two. Perfect. Okay, so, so you got your blade. That's fine. And he... With Hadro in front of him, now I have to roll... I think a disadvantage for this, because I have... We are minus one die. I got two level two arms. Yeah. So, yeah, minus one. Okay, so I get one flat, not a disadvantage. Because that's. You had the level three arm, didn't you? I have two level twos, yeah. Oh, yeah, you gave me a level three because I got knocked out. Yeah. So that was like me help, but then I came to. And then you yeah. got shot again. <laughs> so, so, that, so that put out your level two arm then. So you're two two. So you guys are bad shape, but it's okay. We're gonna go. We're role playing now. It's okay. <laughs> this is all right. I like where this is going. He rolls a four for finesse to cut his hands free. A four. So they see that you are. Uh, I forgot you guys can resist all these things. But I suppose you can't. You have no stress. It takes a D almost a D six. So that's fine. You do cut the binds. They get you. You slip it underneath and you cut the binds. But the guys see it behind you. And now another one is holding your other arm. There's two guys holding each of your arms. And Hadro Christ just shakes his head. Perhaps we can't break this one. Put him in the water. And he is going to use. <laughs> all of his remaining strength to wrestle his arm free and stab Pedro in the neck. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
and he's just going to use all of his stress yep. to oh, okay. push himself to get the die. You can't go into trauma, is that correct? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll extend it a little bit. I'll, if your action puts you in trauma, action, I'll let the action go first, for sure. And then you get thrown into the water, basically. All right. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm at, I'm just barely at, uh... Okay, I'm at, uh, seven stress right now. A seven out of? Seven out of nine. Okay. Okay, all right, so that'll put you, me right, like that now. You right that to the border. I think. And he rolls with skirmish. I have uh, I two pips in that, but I have minus one dice, so. Right. You have two pips minus one dice, so it's one dice. Two pips minus one dice, yeah. I pushed myself as well. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so two dice for sure. Okay. Yeah. That's two fives. Two fives, okay. <laughs> you catch him in the neck, you wrench one of your hands free with the knife, the same knife, and you catch him right in the neck, he goes, oh, oh, oh. He just reacts. He's not saying, he's not giving any orders. He's got a knife sticking out of his neck right now. <laughs> but, you get thrown into the water. And then he holds on to the knife. Oh yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> you have to hold on to the knife, the knife, you hold onto the knife, the knife peels out the other side of his neck. You can see the blood squirt out. Ooh. Um, Cleo, you can see Avery's face just splattered with blood as the two guys throw him in, and then they, and one of them picks up this sack that has a rope on it, and you can see that the rope is tied to the binding on his legs, and they throw the sack in, and it goes sploosh! Avery, you begin to fall into the water. And first you're fighting just for a second, but then there's a sploosh beside you, and then you just get dragged down. You feel it pulling you down and down the light, the bit of torchlight or whatever light that was up there that they had, just so they could see maybe the, the moonlight, I guess, bouncing off the top is just dissipating, fading out and fading out as you begin to be, as you begin to fall down underneath the water. He, I'm gonna die. The we're, gonna, we're gonna jump to Cleo right now. Cleo, you see him get pushed in. Yeah. Then you see. Uh, what the fuck is the other guy's name? Godfrey. That's with God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We kind of forgot about him for a hot second. Yeah, he's still unconscious. That's why I made him okay. unconscious. So you, you can see Godfrey getting pushed in by, by, by two other guys, kind of, and they got to roll him over. It's like a big log they got to roll, and he splashes in the water, and they drop that in. I'm going to dive into the water with the intentions of getting to Avery, because I still have a knife in my hand. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, roll something to get uh, to dive into the water. They still, they're kind of, guys kind of got you. Kind of holding you down. No, because so. he got on top of me and I cut him. Stepping That's in right. It. Thank you. You I'm jump free. in the water. Absolutely. Yeah, you okay. jump into the water. So, you try to swim down to Avery. You can, but it's pitch black. I mean, you, you, he's already got, he's gone down and the water's black and he's being pulled down by weight. He's falling. How but, deep is this water? You said it's a river. No, 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 the, not, this isn't the... It's a dock. It's like a dock. Oh. You're on the dock. Yeah, and it seems to be a dock that goes out at the, at the shipyards, oddly enough. And you dive in the water and you, you swim about, you look, and you look, but you can't see him. You can't see him. And every now and then you can hear this, this sound in the water. Are you shooting in the water? No, they're shooting at the water. Yeah, but they're shooting yeah. at me. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, what would you roll for your? Uh, did you roll? Did you just to go in there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say roll something for that actually. Um, to 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 get in the water unscathed. I guess that'd be a finesse also. I'm okay e with that. Everything just comes out. To I want these dice. Yeah, these, these they are the. Finesse. I only roll my stats with these dice. Six again, no problem. You can get away. And that's when you hear the, the gunshots uh, splooshing off the top of the water as you jump in, just as you jump in. But uh, you search, even with uh, a massive survey, you just, you look and you look, but you have to come up for air eventually. You do not see Avery. 
Avery, it's dark. It's cold. You're trying to fight off, trying to hold your breath, trying to hold your breath, but the pressure's getting more and more intense. He tries to reach down with the knife and try to cut at whatever binding is on his legs. And he is trying to cut that away and get that off. He has to roll at disadvantage. This will just be bad. Skirmish. It's going to be. It's going to be. Like, he's not fighting the rope, but he'll, um... Yeah, that's fine. I'll let you skirmish. You're attacking the rope. Skirmish, yeah. He'll He's certainly to... not trying to sway it, anyway. Alright. So, I have two pips in skirmish. Minus one dice. So flat. I think. Yep. Let's see what happens. It's a two. It's a two. You try and fumble, but it's cold. The water's cold also when you're hurt. You got gunshots in your legs, in your shoulder, and the shoulder just can't get the energy, and eventually you just can't hold your breath, and the water goes into your lungs. You just can't hold it anymore. And life eventually fades out from Avery as he drops into the bottom of the dock, into the bottom of Slag Bay. Slag Bay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, name, the name of the bay they're on. I may not have told you guys that. Cleo. <clears throat> you see a knife float up beside you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have sunk. <laughs> I guess I have to come up for air. Okay. I can't find it. So you uh, break up for air. Do you want to roll something? Perhaps to be undetected or... Prowl is kind of a sneaky kind of thing. Uh, okay. It's used for hunting sneakily All and right, maybe so getting let's, lazy. Let's let's sneakily. prowl then. Let's do a prowl. Mm -hmm. Double six. Natural. That, that's, that's a critical. Two sixes in a row is a critical. You okay. are able to uh, resurface far enough Just away. Just my nose above yeah. the water. <laughs> far, far enough away where they don't see you and you're making very little ripples on the water, but you're bleeding. You're... In. I'm in double. I have two level twos. Two level twos. Okay. But do you swim? And you swim for about 30 minutes before you reach the shore. But you reach the shore. And you're alive. Yeah. It's always me! Everybody dies and I'm just left. <laughs> this... Wow. The dice did not appreciate your guys' luck in that second half. No, Oh really? my god. <laughs> We're gonna kill Hadro though. Yes, we exactly. All of them. That that was the whole. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you took out Hadro and his two top crow. Well, probably two of his top cronies. Yeah, the only one left. That was your goal. Uh, you completed your quest. And that was good. No, that was good. <laughs> I I went a little above bounds on on the rules there, but that was cool. I mean, uh, they 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 tied you up because you went unconscious. You needed help to get out of the score. That's what it means. They got you out and tied you up and then brought you back to consciousness. I, then I allowed for extra things until you were really harmed again. Like, <laughs> harmed, harmed again. And now I'm really out. <laughs> Goodness. Cleo, you get back to shore. What do you do? It's the middle of the night. You're wet. You're bleeding. What are you doing? How close am I to the speak? To the speak? Uh, you guys are in the West Planks, I believe. That's where the speak is. Yep. So, you can, you can get there. Um... It's definitely going to be a harrowing adventure. I'm going to get you... I would try to find Sergei. I'm going to roll or a fortune alive. roll first. Four. Okay. <laughs> so as you kind of come out of the water, you can see it's the middle of the night. No real time where cars should be driving on the road for the most part, but there are cars every now and then driving by going up and down the roads, and you sneak and you kind of huddle in alleyways, but you eventually make it back to the speak. Sergey and Nellis are there. You make it in the back way, and you're dripping wet still. Collapse on the floor. Exhaustion. Okay. They uh, begin to... Uh, yeah, that happens. So um, you get downtime. <laughs> Cleo gets some downtime. I wonder if your sheet, if you had better stats, you know, when you go home tonight, take that, 
and see if you rather if you do find it, see if you had better stats and imagine if that would have changed things. I don't think so. I think I didn't have more than two pips in many things. Okay. So I think it would have it would have evened out either way. Okay. I think I think Avery was destined to die here. <laughs> So what's going to happen is you're going to get to the to, to the speak, and you're going to see uh, you're going to see Sergey and Nellis, and you're going to just pass out, like you said, flop there on the floor. And happening about around you, Sergey kind of looks at Nellis. Sergey shakes his head. Nellis starts packing up his cards, getting his stuff, and packing his bag. Nellis makes his way back out on the street, probably in worse shape than he was beforehand, now that he jumped back with you guys. Sergey takes you, you wake up briefly uh, <clears throat> on the way to Willard's Manor, as you can see Sergey patching you up with bandages, and he's got sweat beating down, and you're sweating because you're sick and your wounds are infected, but oh you get Lord. you get back to Willard's Mansion eventually, and you, you wake up in a bed. You can hear horses baying and cows in the background. You can smell the sweet country air coming in from the uh, from the outside. And uh, Sergey comes in, brings a, a tray of food and puts it on the table. Chicken. <laughs> I'm just thinking, would George as a character would he probably bring you red meat instead, just because he's George? Probably, yeah, even probably. though I want it to get you. <laughs> so you, 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 he brings you in a uh, uh, mixed mash of breakfast food. There's some oatmeal there. There's no chicken, but there is some cut of pepperoni and cheese and crackers and whatnot. And uh, he kind of looks at you in his face. You can just see it in his face, that uh, failure in his face. And he, unfortunately, Sergey was, uh, <clears throat> was busy. Because as you guys went down to the docks, he's got a bit of a drinking problem. You guys know that. But uh, he wasn't able to make it to the main event because he was half in the bag and just uh, and wasn't able to do it. But <laughs> you can see the, the grief and the regret in his eyes. Can you say anything, Sergey? I think retirement will suit as well. Sergey nods his head and closes the door. You're left with the sight of the sun out a window, a few clouds in the sky. Just this quiet, peaceful ease of existence. No more fancy parties. No more guns. No more gambling. Just a country life with Willard. Thank you for watching the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This has been Gritty. Episode 4. The Price Was Right. If you're enjoying this podcast and want to hear more, think about becoming a patron if you're able at www.patreon.com slash death needs dialogue. There, you can listen to over 200 hours of extra content, including Order of the Curse Breakers, a gritty adventure in the land of Nuravir, game mastered by the always incredible Zach Zazarino. Depths of Felthan, now on Season 2. Game mastered by myself, K.O. Thatcher. And my personal favorite, The Legend's Gauntlet. A vicious competition between players and the environment itself. Where there's always room for a TPK. Thank you very much. Have a happy new year.